In this video, we talk about subsetting data frames, adding columns to data frames, doing math with columns between data frames, and removing columns in data frames in R. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, if you haven't already, I recommend watching my videos on vectors, matrices, and lists, because if you understand how to navigate vectors, matrices, and lists, then data frames are easy. You know, they all kind of work similarly. And vectors, you know, vectors are like the backbone of R. So if you don't understand vectors, you need to understand that before really doing much of anything. So anyway, moving forward, I'm gonna go ahead and set my working directory and import my file as a data frame. So let me go ahead and check it out real quick. So here's my data frame. And let me go ahead and look at the head so we can easily see what's going on. So look at the head of the data frame. So we see that it's the 2020 election results. So we got our state, county, candidate, party, total votes, one. And so now let's go ahead and talk about subsetting and exploring this information. So if we do DF and then our brackets here and three, three, run that real quick, we get Joe Jorgensen. So what happened was it went to the third row and then the third col column here, which is Joe Jorgensen, and we got you know, Joe Jorgensen as the result that printed out right here. So that should be hopefully pretty self-explanatory by this point. If we throw a four in here, we get Lib. So she's the Libertarian Party over here. So we just moved over a column, right? So the first number here is the row, and then the next number is the column. Hopefully you know that already. It's the same concept when you're exploring matrices. So it should, it should hopefully be, you know, familiar to you of how this works. Moving on, of course, we could go ahead and select a, a subset. So if we want to do like the first three, and then we throw a comma in here, we get the first three entries of our data frame. So we get you know, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Joe Jorgensen, first three entries and how they did and all that type of stuff. Uh, we could go ahead and, you know, if we want to just look at their their party, I think that was column four, right? We can throw that in there and we get their, their parties, Dem, Rep, Lib, and so on. And as you might have noticed, when we looked at just one column, it can't give us back a vector. So we can double check what we got here is vector. And we can double check what we got here. And we see that this is a vector. It's not a, it's not a data frame. So let me double check data frame, data frame. So run that. So it's not a data frame. So that's one thing to note. If you're only pulling one column out of your data frame, it's gonna come back as a vector. If you don't want it to be a vector, you can go ahead and set the drop to false. So to do that, you have to throw another comment here, drop equals to capital F, run that real quick. And now you see that it looks more like a data frame. And then if we do our check is data frame, and then we check it real quick. We run it, we see that this is now a data frame. So I know that might've been a lot real quick, but I wanted to point it out while we're here because it'll come in handy later on. So moving forward, of course, we can go ahead and use other vectors to select entries. So we can use the combine and be like one, three, five, and then we'll leave the columns blank. So it displays all our columns and we see we get entry one, three, and five in our data frame and the information for that. Now, alternatively, since our columns have names like state, county, candidate, party, et cetera, we can also use those to navigate. So if I throw in here, county, it'll load in the county column for our first, third, and fifth entries in our data frame. So we get Kent, Kent, Newcastle, just like above. Kent, Kent, Newcastle, right? And of course, this is a vector. It is not a data frame. So if I wanted to make it a data frame, I'd do the drop F right here. And for the sake of example, I'll drop it in here, drop equals to F. So now we have a data frame of our county right here. And so I know I went really quick through here, but check out the vectors matrices list videos and it'll all come together. Links in the description below if you're not grasping what I'm putting down right here. But let's go ahead and move on now. So let's go ahead and do DF. And we'll go ahead and select a column now. So I'm going to leave the, the row blank. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll just throw in the candidate column. So I'll run that real quick. And we see we get a vector of all the candidates in our data frame, or at least the first thousand of them. And now another way we could go ahead and reference this, kind of the, the shorthand way, is to use the dollar sign. So I could also go df and dollar sign candidate and run that real quick. And we get the same exact results. So this right here is the same result as this right here. It's just a little shorter, neater, easier to write and so on, but you can use them interchangeably. So either way does the same thing. Now the drop F function only works when you use this method right here. You can't do a drop F with this method. So drop F 
if you want to keep it as a data frame like we're doing right here. So that's really the only difference between these two methods is if you want to use it as a data frame or keep your column as a data frame and you need to use a drop F argument, you need to use this option instead of this option. Okay, so just wanted to show you these are two different ways you can pick out a column in your data frame. Now adding columns is quite easy as well. So the first way I'll go ahead and DF dollar sign and we'll just say num and then we'll store it as one, two, so a vector. We'll run that real quick and then let's go ahead and take a look at our data frame. And actually, let me do the head so we can look at it easier, cleaner, all that stuff. So here's the head. So now we see that we have a new column called num, and it just repeats that vector 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Of course, I could have other values and put them into my data frame if I wanted to do that. But that's how easily or that's how easy it is to add a column. You just reference your data frame, use a dollar sign, give the column a name, and then you give it whatever values you wanna go ahead and give it. So easy enough. Now, as I've previously said, this way is the same as this way. So they both mean the same stuff. So another way we could you know, create a column is df and then num2, and then I'll go ahead and store it as well as one, two. Run that real quick and then we'll load our head df again real quick and now we see that i have another column called num2 so i signed it this way instead of this way see i was showing you that they're interchangeable now we can also do math with data frames very easily so if you have numeric values so i got total votes i got num and num2 so i can do math with these different values and just for the sake of example i'm going to go ahead and do df and we'll go with num3 and we'll store it as df num times df num2 run that real quick and i'll go ahead and run our head real quick and now we see we have a num3 and it's simply multiplied the num1 or num times num2 and we get num3 over here now of course i could have done addition subtraction division exponents or done any sort of formula that i wanted to right here as well so doing math between columns and data frames is a very easy thing to do and of course, if I want to go ahead and drop columns, we'll talk about that real quick. I just tell it which column I want to go ahead and drop. So we'll just say the num column, and then I set that to null. So I run that real quick. I look at my data frame head real quick, and we see that the num column has dropped. Alternatively, I could go ahead and do this. So I'll do the num2 column, and I can set this to null, run it, and then I'll look at the head of my data frame and we see that the num2 column has also dropped off and I'm just left with the num3 column. It still stores those values in there from when I've multiplied num and num2 together. And that's pretty much it in terms of subsetting data frames, adding columns to your data frame, doing math between columns and data frames, and then removing data frames. So I hope, we've, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.